Hi, my name is Jenny Edwards. I'm from Lighthouse Architecture and Science and this is my house. And today I'm going to talk to you about how this house works so well, not because of fancy technologies, because it uses the climate really well. It's designed for its site. So we'll show you how we use the sun and natural cross ventilation. So let's have fun. So today we're going to chat about some tips to think about when you're building a new home, but also things to think about for your existing house. Don't give up on your existing home. There are plenty of things you can do to improve its functioning, its thermal performance as we like to say. Some people might ask, why would you even bother doing this stuff? And I think the main reason is for your own comfort and your health and enjoyment of your home. And number two is the big financial gains you can have. You can actually massively reduce your cooling bills over summer and your heating bills over winter. So do give it a try. Now we're standing at the front of my block now and one of the challenges here was that the block is long and skinny with north directly to the front. So when we designed the house we had to keep that in mind. So we wanted to capture that northern sun into the front of the house but also into some of the rooms at the back. So we've done that cleverly with the design. And we also had to be really careful about the eastern and western sun. And we'll show you how we've done that. So come on in. So we're standing on the, the front deck of my house, which is north facing. And you can see there's lots of lovely glass here that lets the winter sun right into the house. But in summertime, like we are now, we want to shade this area and the inside of the house. So we've used ornamental grapevines here to provide this beautiful lush green shade, stops the sun and also provides some evaporative coolings. Another thing we've done out the front here because we don't have an eave is on the house is create an eave here on the pergola using these fixed angle louvers. So in summer they completely block the midday sun but in winter they let the sun in and it floods right back into the dining room. So coming into the, the dining area of my home, um, you can see that it's beautifully shaded on a summer's morning. Um, but in winter, in the middle of the day, the sun comes way back to the end of the dining table. Another thing you can see is that there is some sun coming through this eastern window. And typically during a hot summer, I'd have shade sails up there. But because it's been a really unusually cool summer, I've actually taken them down. So another important thing when designing a home and thinking about using the natural climate and site is to think about cross ventilation. So here we've designed so there are, there are openings on either side of the home and a big double door out to the deck there. But on a hot summer's day you close up the house and then at night as the temperature outside drops, when it drops below the inside of the house, you open up, let that cross breeze flow in to cool your home down and ceiling fans are also a fantastic thing and we've got them in every room in this house. Because the house is designed to work with the climate and the site really well, we need very little heating and cooling. In fact, the only heating and cooling we use, apart from the ceiling fans, is a small split system. So a reverse cycle air conditioner, incredibly efficient. Um, and at the moment, we don't need any heating or cooling at all. So now we're in the southeastern corner of the house, which is actually my bedroom. So this wall faces east um, and so cops a lot of that morning summer sun, which on a hot summer's day we would shade, we'd have the external blind down and the internal blinds, but today it's not very warm so we're letting that in. Again, this room has a clever little pop out to the north and a glazed door which allows us to soak up the lovely winter sun. So we're now at the back eastern corner of my house and this is my bedroom. And as you can see, the morning summer sun strikes this wall pretty hard. So what we've done is we've used deciduous vines here again and I let them grow across in summer to provide that extra shade and insulation. And then in winter, again, I prune it back really hard. Remembering in summer, it's really important. We want that shade. We want to stop that heat gain. But in winter, we want that passive heat gain. We want to let the sun in as much as possible. So again, by using deciduous plantings, here on this eastern wall, I've, I've let them grow down. So they provide a lovely vertical shade, which stops the morning sun from striking the bathroom and laundry windows here. Um, so summer, block that sun outside. Winter, you want to let it in. 
What you can see here are just really cheap shade sails from Bunnings. Anything that stops the sun striking the house or the areas outside your house does a great job. And before the plants grew up around my home, I used shade sails like these and other things, cardboard boxes, sheets and things, anything to stop that sun from striking the glass. So get creative. Every year I arrange them differently and have fun. And I've only got sort of one section left that really needs some help over summer. External shading is really, really important. We've got these um, retractable blinds um, on the eastern windows here. And it, this sort of blind, something that stops the sun from striking the glass, will actually reduce the heat gain in, through that window by about 80%. So if you can stop the sun hitting the glass, you're well ahead. And one of the things I want to stress though is it doesn't have to be a fancy blind. I only got these a couple of years ago and for the first three years we used different shade sail arrangements and at different rental properties I've actually used tarps. Anything that stops the sun striking that glass will help. It doesn't have to be a fancy blind. One of the keys to making a solar passive house work is having some thermal mass. And so here we've got a concrete floor and as the sun strikes the slab, the slab absorbs that heat and because the slab is insulated underneath and on the edges, it then doesn't lose that heat to the ground, but re-radiates that heat into the house throughout the day and into the evening, keeping the house at a much more stable temperature. If you're building a new home, the really important thing to think about is where is north? And you want to use that northern orientation, typically for your main living areas, because that's where you live most of the time and use most of your energy. So point it north, to soak up that free winter sun, but then think about shading. You have to be able to shade it for, to the north and shade any easterly and westerly windows you have. And don't be afraid to use your landscape. Your garden can really help you with managing summer heat gain. Now, of course, if you've got an existing home, you can't turn it around and face it north, but do stop and think about which parts of your house do get that northern light. Even if it is a bedroom or a room you don't use so much, think about opening those windows to let the sun in and think about the shading. Again, a lot of people focus on the internal window dressings, your curtains and blinds, but think about the outside and how you can stop the sun from striking that glass. You can make existing houses um, function much, much better. So don't be afraid to try lots of things. Thanks for coming on the little tour around my house today. Um, I hope you're motivated to try some things at your house, whether you're designing a new home or working with an existing one. You can use the sun, think about the sun, you can use the natural breezes and you can use your landscape to really improve how efficiently and comfortably your house performs. So give it a go.